And police are looking for a suspect after two people were shot during the PRP male football game last night. According to LMPD, the shooting happened in the parking lot in front of PRP High School and the victims are teenagers. WHS 11 sports reporter Mason Horodisky was at the game and shows us the moment shots rang out. Male and PRP High School were in the midst of their Sunday makeup game after the effects of Hurricane Helene pushed it two days later than original. With just over two minutes left in the game, a player for PRP went down for a prolonged time with an injury. As the crowd went quiet, <laughs> gunshots rang out and panic ensued. Players and fans rushed away from the noise towards the back of the school. Students should go underneath the bleachers on both sides, please. As in the front, two victims were shot. In the midst of a heavy police presence, medical would eventually take the victim to the hospital. Players and fans would slowly make their way out of the high school, as what was supposed to be another fun night under gridiron lights devolved into one of fear and sadness. Mason Horodisky, WHAS 11. Investigators said they're pursuing leads, but are asking people living nearby to check their home video systems for anything suspicious. LMPD said they believe those involved fled the area through residential neighborhoods near PRP. If you know anything, call 502-574-LMPD or use the online crime tip portal. And the other big story of the morning, more than 2 million people are without power across the southeast after Hurricane Helene hit Thursday. And that's according to the U.S. power outage map. At least 90 people have died across multiple states, and that includes 11 in North Carolina. Helene dumped nearly 30 inches of rain in the mountains of western North Carolina, causing life-threatening flooding and at least a dozen landslides. State officials are calling it biblical devastation, with entire roads and cities washed away or underwater. The governor there says more than 500 National Guard members are now working alongside local emergency responders conducting search and rescue missions, delivering needed supplies, and working to restore infrastructure. The governor said the death toll would likely rise as rescuers reach areas isolated by the widespread flooding. President Biden has approved disaster declarations for North Carolina and the other states affected by Helene. Biden described the impact of the storms as stunning and said he'd visit the area this week as long as it doesn't disrupt, disrupt rescues or recovery work. These videos are from Western North Carolina, sent to us by a former WHAS 11 employee, Larry Ledford. Ledford told us it is nearly impossible to get to his hometown of Marshall now. The main highway running through the town from Tennessee is completely washed out. Ledford also told us he lost someone he was connected with due to the storm. Uh, he refused to leave his home. Sadly, the water got so high that it took his home off the foundation. Uh, the home did go over the upper dam and basically just exploded and they haven't been able to find his body. So that's uh, one of those moments where when they tell you you need to evacuate, you should evacuate. Ledford tells us this is the worst flood in Marshall since 1916. He added supplies and fuel are having to be airlifted into the area. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir announced Kentucky has sent an incident management team to North Carolina to assist in the recovery effort. A Louisville Metro Safe supervisor and dispatcher will be among the crew heading to North Carolina. He has been working to restore power here in Kentucky. The energy company said Helene impacted more than 205,000 customers, making it the fourth largest event for the utility in the last 20 years. Now, some of the hardest hit areas are in eastern, eastern and central Kentucky as well as here in Louisville. The heavy wind and rain down nearly 1,500 wires and broke more than 100 poles. Right now, LG&E says around 7,000 customers are still without power. This morning, we have new video showing the moment a semi-truck went up in flames after a crash on the Kennedy Bridge. A viewer sent that to us from their dash cam. You can see the crash sent a fireball up into the sky. Police say it happened Saturday just before 5 in the evening and less than an hour after I-65 reopened after a different semi-crash in the exact same spot. 
This semi had crashed into a concrete median. LMPD says the driver was unable to escape the burning truck and died at the scene. Six minutes after the hour now and young people being held at the Jefferson Regional Juvenile Detention Center will temporarily be moved. That center is closing for some much needed repairs and renovations. According to the state's Department of Juvenile Justice, the Linden area facility will see increased safety with the improvements being made to its intake area and electronic security systems. It will also update the plumbing and increase the bed count from 10 to 28. During the renovation work, those with lower level offenses will be held at the Campbell Regional Detention Center. Meanwhile, those with higher level offenses will continue to be housed in one of three high level facilities across Kentucky. The work is expected to be complete sometime mid-2026. And looking ahead, the sheriff accused of shooting and killing a district judge in eastern Kentucky is expected back in court this week. Sheriff Sean Mickey Steins has a preliminary hearing scheduled on Tuesday. Steins, who's the sheriff in Letcher County, is charged with murder after police say he shot and killed district judge Kevin Mullins in his chambers. State police say the two were arguing before the shooting. Governor Bashir has called on Steins to resign and indicated he'd move to remove him if Steins does not.